is a secret forest nestled in the middle of a city. The world's smallest bee calls it home. But so does its enemy. A face-off is inevitable. A prince rules the kingdom, but a predator threatens the peace. Quiet hermits hide during the day, and noisy critters get it on at night. Witness the hidden world of curious creatures living wild in this enchanted forest. Our story begins in summertime. In the Singapore Botanic Gardens Learning Forest, a 10 hectare woodland paradise at its southwestern edge, filled with over 700 species of plants. Fruiting season has begun. The buffet lines are open, and customers are coming in. Fruit platters up in the trees, and down by the roots. Good timing because there are extra mouths to feed. A family of long-tailed macaques have joined the feast. Sounds like lunch. Starfruit ready for picking. Looks like it's not to Dad's liking. But more for Junior. In the heart of the gardens, a six hectare pristine rainforest. with trees 150 years old and counting. One critically endangered tree lives here. The Sindora Wallachai. The Botanic Gardens team sets up a line to get to the top of the tree. 20 meters up. This is the type of job that you can't work from home.
unpredictable weather is all in a day's work. They need young shoots that only grow at the crown to extract their DNA. Analyzing a tree's DNA helps them understand how it has evolved alongside other plant species. Valuable information that will be shared with other scientists around the world. A new morning. Time for the daily workout and chores. Also on her rounds, a Himalayan cloak and dagger bee. A hoverfly, no larger than a five-cent coin, guzzling down a breakfast smoothie. And on the other end of the weighing scale, a broad-handed carpenter bee. Now she can do without breakfast. But one species is easy to miss. Meet the teeniest, tiniest bee in the world. The Valdez's stingless bee. Just four millimeters big, smaller than a grain of rice and only found around tropical and subtropical forests. She may be tiny, but she's a VIP, very important pollinator of the gardens. After those morning chores, she's back home. But she's not alone. Their nest is at risk from a mighty enemy that is equally tiny. Ants are also lovers of energy-rich nectar. And they know this is an easier food source, filled with honey and fat, juicy bee larvae. A scout on a mission. First line of defense. This bee on guard duty won't hesitate to unleash an aggressive attack. A game of hide and seek commences. Even if the ant manages to slip past security, she will crawl straight into this. A labyrinth entrance 
designed to confuse intruders. Only the colony knows the way in, through a maze of hardened resin tubes. The third line of defense, an ant repellent glue that entangles. When under attack, they create a barrier of fresh, sticky resin. Together, keeping the nest safe. As night falls and visitors head home, the rest of the rainforest is tucking in for the night. Quiet now. Except for this guy. A rare native rainforest species that was once widespread, now incredibly vulnerable. A cinnamon bush frog. the size of a 50-cent coin. A cold-blooded young bachelor in search of a mate. But it's not the only one. Female arrives. A singing competition commences. Whose golden voice will win her over? Finally, she's made her choice. Looks like this little couple will be staying up all night. crisp morning in the Singapore Botanic Gardens. Some creatures are ready to head to bed. Some having a spot of breakfast. Back in the learning forest, the one-year-old macaque is already having the terrible twos. Always up to no good. warns him to stop monkeying around.
When you don't have gadgets, you have to make up your own entertainment. Macaque Jr.'s most treasured possession? A dried up Java almond nut. Never straying too far from mum or dad's watchful gaze. But little does this family know that there's always somebody watching from above. King of the skies is on the prowl. All creatures run for cover. Together, safe. The red-legged crake only appears near dusk. The gardens is known as one of the best places in the world to spot them. Just a hair shorter than the average house cat, Red-legged crakes are known to be incredibly shy. What we would call antisocial. Always on high alert. In the presence of a human, it won't move a muscle. Nope. Your screen's not broken. Once the coast is clear, it flees. The 
southwest monsoon season. The wettest August of the last 40 years. All this water is a catalyst for fungi growth that could endanger the thousands of trees here. the Jalawi tree is up for inspection. Checking the integrity of the tree trunk and looking for cavities. Meanwhile, at the Botany Center, the team is creating a unique concoction to fight tree fungal decay. Trichoderma, a fungi-killing fungus. The spores are extracted, made into a concentrated solution. sprayed onto branches vulnerable to decay. The ultimate biological weapon. In the learning forest, or rather jungle gym, for the young, long-tailed macaque. Spring-loaded muscles help it leap up to five meters high. The long tail helps with balancing. Die-hard fan, Mummy, provides moral support. After an exhausting training session, a quick break. And then it's back to the gym. It's a busy morning in the Ethnobotany Garden. Custom-built bee boxes are undergoing a home makeover.
but for the stingless bee colony, it's business as usual. The female foraging bee has a special structure on her hind legs called a pollen basket. Inside, harvested pollen mixes with nectar. But what goes in must come out. A stream of housekeepers takes out the trash. Accumulated waste can be hazardous to the brood, adults, and even the food stores. So, for the health of the hive, there's always time for spring cleaning. On the grounds, one man's trash is another's treasure. Fallen leaves from all around the gardens are collected and redistributed. This leaf litter keeps the soil moist, releasing nutrients back into the earth as it decomposes. The Goldilocks zone for big fat worms. The happiest place in the world. The perfect, oops, this also happens to be the red-legged crake's hunting ground. Its small, sharp bill is designed for worm hunting. A tasty dinner for one. A hot, sticky afternoon in the Singapore Botanic Gardens. Everyone is hiding from the heat. But the red-legged crakes are on a family outing. with a new kid in tow. This chick won't be winning any beauty pageants soon. But its dull feathers will help it to blend in and hide from predators. Baby crakes are born precocial, meaning they can feed themselves just days after hatching. It will be able to fly the coop after a few more weeks. In the rainforest,
a baby banded bay cuckoo, calling for its parent. An unlikely bird turns up. The cuckoo is a brood parasite. Its unwitting hostage, a common Iora tricked into raising it. Urgent distress calls send it on an endless food hunt. A voracious eater that's never satisfied. No wonder it's already twice the Iora's size. Meanwhile, the juvenile macaque has shed his black infant coat. But other habits are harder to let go. Mum will stop nursing her boy soon. It needs to swap this food source for something else. On the menu today, an entree of leaves and fruits. A main course of flowers. Some grass. And for dessert, food that falls from the sky. The monkeys also play an important role as gardeners helping to disperse seeds wherever they eat. The Singapore Botanic Gardens is home to more than 10,000 types of plants. Spread out over 82 hectares, the size of 115 football fields. And eventually, every tree will be mapped using this. This GPS backpack pinpoints exact latitudes and longitudes. It's tedious, but necessary work. Plotting where each tree grows will allow them to be found years down the road. And who knows, it could be the tree that holds the cure for cancer. At the edge of the learning forest, by the Swan Lake, the long-tailed macaque family is taking a break. Grooming isn't just for cleanliness. It's also an indication of rank. It's clear Mum's number one in this family. But Dad, wants in on the pampering, too. A 
a full body spa session. This mutual grooming is crucial for maintaining the relationship between the male and the female. Now, if only there wasn't a pesky child in the way. Hierarchy is strict in macaque groups. So for now, mom and dad are boss. The end of another month. The juvenile long-tailed macaque has grown into a strapping young lad. And just like a rebellious teenager, he's grown a mohawk too. In the rainforest canopy, as high as a nine-story building. The gray-headed fish eagle is perched on his throne. Sharp talons to grip prey. A curved beak that tears flesh with ease. On the hunt. It's estimated that there are less than a hundred thousand of these raptors left in the whole of Southeast Asia. In Singapore, the small population has been growing steadily. Amongst the centuries-old giants, one special young plant is flourishing. The Singapore ginger, a rare native species. First discovered in the wild in 2012. The Botanic Gardens is now in the process of conserving it. Propagating from young plant tissue. Sprouting thousands of plantlets in just a couple of months. After maturing, these will be planted throughout the gardens to ensure that they never become extinct again.
Meanwhile, another team in the rainforest is creating breeding habitats for the cinnamon bush frog. These frogs only breed in phytothelms, water-filled cavities of trees. There are only an estimated few hundred adult frogs in the wild. These phytal thelms will give them a fighting chance to repopulate. Humid days give way to thundery showers. Not everyone's enjoying it. But for others, it's much needed relief. The juvenile red-legged crake has come of age and into his colors. But there are some lessons he has yet to learn. An older male lives here. Territorial, because it's mating season. No match against the stronger male. Time to retreat. Nighttime in the rainforest. A clutch of cinnamon bush frog eggs. Each no bigger than a bubble tea pearl, surrounded by a protective layer of gelatin. During this embryonic stage, they are vulnerable to egg-killing fungus. This species only lays up to 10 eggs at a time. After two weeks, they hatch and plop into the water below. They'll grow here, well-fed and protected. Little by little, their population can begin to rebuild. In the next episode, the seasons of life, from breeding to migration. Discover the community of amazing creatures in this wild world of wetlands and lakes.